Hello, what culture? Simon from What Culture here. I'm stood outside the Sears Centre because I have just watched All In. And when I watch wrestling, you know what I do. I give some of it an ups and I give some of it some downs. So forget about all that. Don't worry about it. Let's up those downs. Hey, it's so Matthew and Bochamania. He can come in here. How you doing, dude? You right? Yeah, I'm all right. How has the weekend been for you? It's been f***ing marvellous. Yeah? Bloody marvellous. I've got something on my head. What is it? Stop. Sorry. Oh, it's a cab. It's a lost income. Thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate it. So yeah, we did indeed start with uh, SCU. But who the hell did they fight? The Briscoe brothers. The Briscoes. What a show, Simon Miller. This is all a bit different to me. I'm not used to this. I've got a crowd. Show the crowd. Show the audience, Phil. Do a little spin. Do a little spin. Of course we want to talk about the pre-show. You were. The reason I want to talk about the pre-show mostly is because I think in any, term, any show I've ever been to, it was the loudest event I've ever been at in my life. I mean, that and the over-budget battle roll was actually right. You're getting bleeped out. That's not cool. Uh, <laughs> so cool. Who's that guy? Uh, I mean, honestly, I've never heard a crowd louder in my life. And I actually thought all the Flip Gordons, basically what happened is, if you don't know, we're trying to run down the card. Uh, there was uh, a luchador in the ring. There was a load of different spots. Billy Gunn was in there, Billy Gunn's son was in there. Marco Stunt was in there. You should check Marco Stunt out if you don't know. And essentially, at the end, it was Bully Ray, uh, the luchador who he didn't know, we all knew it was, ran in the ring, took his mask, he's flipped Gordon, he threw Bully Ray out of there. And he was the number one contender for the later on in the ring of a title match against Jay Lethal. And the Briscoes won as well, I think I can remember. They're both going to, thank you, I don't remember anything mostly. And they're both going to get ups. It was probably not only the best pre-show I've ever seen, but Phil and I both agree, I think that was the best, back, the best booked battle royal probably ever, I mean, in history. Apart from the one I was in, Defiant, which was an incredible, incredible moment for me and maybe nobody else. And then the main show started, and now I don't know how everyone around here is going to react to this, but I was quite surprised that the first match was Matt Cross versus uh, MJF. I thought that was a, I don't know, yeah, it's a surprise match, but to me, I would have put that more in the middle of the card. I kind of felt the crowd were a little bit like, oh, this is a bit strange, I don't know how to think about this. Look, both are really talented guys. No one agrees with me here. I kind of, I kind of think MJF is a little bit like the independent version of The Miz. That's just what I think. But it was a good match. Matt Cross won after his uh, shooting star press. Uh, I would personally, I wouldn't have put that at the start of, of the start of the main card. So I'm going to get in close and say, I don't want him to hear. I'm going to give that a down. But the, the match itself can get an up just in case I get killed. He also had a Kenny Omega promo during the pre-show as well, which was, uh, which, was, which was pretty good. And they took the mirror. I can't remember because I'm super tired. Who the hell, what the hell is the name of the main commentator on SmackDown? Todd? Don Phillips. That's who I think. Thank you very much. We couldn't remember that. They did the whole thing with his feet. She was standing there with his feet. Kenny Omega was doing the thing. Right? I wanted to mention that as well because that was quite funny. And that is actually overall what I thought was the best thing about All In. It was a proper big show, right? It was a proper big pay-per-view. Genuinely did feel like a WrestleMania for indies, but they took, they, well, they didn't take themselves too seriously at all. And they had fun, and I think, you know, as I like to say on all of these, all these shows, you should always have fun, you should always enjoy yourself when you're watching pro wrestling. And that would probably get the biggest up throughout the whole show, because in these certain things that people didn't like, I mean, look, we, look, we usually do things in chronological order, but to make my point, in case you are, for some bizarre reason, trying to watch this to figure out what happened, there was a moment where Hangman Page had defeated Joey Janela, the lights went out, and a bunch of penis stewards, druids, walked out. The crowd chanted, rest in penis. There's a chant. I feel, I'm so sorry. I'm so very sorry. There are children here. There are, but look, I didn't book the show. Uh, if I did, there would have been more penis. And then the... <laughs> and, the, and the penis droids came out, and as you can imagine, they went to the ring. Handman Page was terrified, and it was the return of obviously Joey Ryan. And then his penis went, the famous Dick Red, and, it's, and his penis went and got his revenge on Hangman Page. Uh, the second match, of course, was Stephen Amell versus Christopher Daniels. Now, again, I'm not 100% sure I would have put this in the second match of the cut. Like, massive respect to Stephen Amell for doing this in front of that kind of crowd. And to be fair, given this only is, what, third match he's ever had? I mean, I think, no, he had, he had one out at SummerSlam, and he had another one. Exactly, that's what I thought, it was his third match. I mean, fair play to that guy, given that he has a filming schedule, he has an actual, you know, career, and he managed to put that. I, I get that Christopher Daniels is one of the you know, greatest wrestlers in history. But still, I thought it was really good. Stephen Amell took a crazy, a crazy bump through a table. He literally was outside of the ring. He jumped. Christopher Daniels moved out of the way. And obviously then, Christopher Daniels hit a best moonsault ever. One, two, three. I don't think... Did anybody here actually think Stephen Amell was going to win? No. no. 
someone will say, no, you like, didn't. You're I'm just being that guy. Is. You're that guy. Okay, he's got a bleep there. Every time you swear, poor Phil, standing, who has to go back to his hotel room now and edit this, as to do it. Everyone say sorry to Phil. Everyone apologize to Phil. Thank you, Phil. I don't know if we're going to even have the ups and downs counters for this. Whatever, everything you're getting up, I don't even care. Yeah, we got to the four-way women's match. I actually thought it was really... Tessa Blanchard has come on leaps and bounds since I've last seen her live. She's, I mean, they're all really, really good. Chelsea Green as well, her gimmick is just fantastic. But you can kind of tell the crowd was a little bit, a little bit tired, a little bit exhausted. Or at least, you know, holding off because they knew what was coming down the line. And if I can remember rightly, I think Tessa Blanchard hit a DDT on Chelsea Green and she won. But who, who even knows anymore? This is the most surreal moment of my life. And then out of nowhere, we had the NWA Heavyweight Championship match between Cody Rhodes and Nick Aldis. Um, I'm still not 100% sure why they put this in the middle of the show, because I assumed that something big was going to happen at the end of the show. So you think, well, and it, was, it was a lovely, lovely moment. And Cody Rhodes won, won the NWA Championship. And there were a load of callbacks to matches that Dusty Rhodes has had. And, you know, Cody, you know, bled and, and things like that. And it was really, really cool. But I, I assumed that something was going to happen later on. I mean, it didn't. So it was a bit strange to me to have this kind of, because to me, because you had this really, really good feel good moment in the middle of the show, I think that kind of drained the crowd. Uh, a little bit more. And there's also a really strange segment. I'll be intrigued to see what our little posse thinks of this. What do we think of Earl Hebner's ex and pretending that Cody was actually injured when he wasn't? I mean, I honestly just thought he was hurt. It, it looked, scared me. Yeah. It looked fake because his and wife didn't even come up to him. She was all the way in the other side. That's a good point. That's a good point. She didn't touch him or anything. She was like on the other side. Right, we can agree with this. I doubt you're going to put counters on Phil. Guess it down. Before the matches, we had Team uh, Team America Nightmare. A lot of people came out of Cody Rhodes. And we had Team uh, Nick Aldis. Uh, Jeff Jarrett was him. We had DDP and um, uh, Tommy Dreamer was with Cody Rhodes as well. And yeah, basically, and Glec oh yeah, so Davari came out to tend to Nick Aldis just so DDP could arrive and give him a diamond cup. I'm not gonna lie, I thought that was, I tell you why I think that was brilliant, because let's say we are gonna treat all in like the you know indie WrestleMania. I know it's a bit of a cheesy thing, but I think we can. You would never get anything like that on WrestleMania. Like I know we had the uh, Triple H Sting stuff from a few, a few years ago, and I thought that was fun, but never to the point you'd have, you know, DDP, who's not involved in anything, hasn't been involved in wrestling sort of specifically, coming, I, it's just really, really fun. Uh, yeah, it, I, I just, it made me laugh. And I think that's, I think that's kind of the theme of the whole evening. It was just really fun and it was really entertaining. So yeah, eventually, uh, the actual spot, I, I think I recall rightly, is the Nick Aldis went for a sunset flip and Cody just sat down on him, one, two, three. We'd seen all the finishes by that point and the crowd loved it again. The reaction to that was, was wonderful. And I think you could see the emotion on, on Cody Rhodes' face as well. He had a celebration in the ring. And, you know, given everything that Cody has done since he left the WWE, I think even if you're out there going, oh, I'm not too sure about him, surely this draws a line under it. You know, the man, much like if they said in the ring afterwards, the cameras went off, much like Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, is making a real, mo a real movement in indie wrestling. And I don't think that would have happened if he hadn't had the balls to say, you know, I'm going to leave WWE. I'm going to leave a comfortable paycheck. And, you know, being on, it's still the grandest stage, whether, you know, you like that or not. And now look what, it, what he's done. I know he's not just the only person in that, but that's why I liked it so much and why I presume it would be at the end of the night. But as we were to find out, there was a lot more to come. It was Hangman Page versus Joey Janela, which blew my mind because I thought, okay, we've just gone through all of this, and now, oh, someone's just given me an Akata dollar. Thank you very much, man. I'm going to give that to Phil. Phil really wanted one. That's to you, Phil. Phil does a lot of hard work. He deserves the Akata dollar more than me. Uh, and what did you think of the uh, the the power bomb where Joey Janela basically died because he landed on his head and shoulder through one of the two tables? I mean, I, everything they did in that match terrified me. The finisher, when uh, you know Hangman Page basically did his reverse tombstone through a table, is of a, la a ladder. Sorry, of a ladder was. I mean, Phil, Phil, you you pointed it out best. Well, yeah, so we had the call back to the Joey Ryan stuff with the telephone, yeah. which was good. It was a lot of fun, and the boot was funny as well. I know I, I made a joke about it earlier, but. I mean, they did land as safe as you could hope two people doing that spot to land. But if someone came up to me and said, do you want to do it? I go, I'm all right. Thank you very much. But I appreciate it all the same. Sorry? Hey, he is dead. Everyone, everyone called Joey is dead. But it was a really just crazy, crazy match. And again, following that from the Cody Rhodes thing, it was just like, I don't have anything left. That's why my voice is going now. I think we kind of saw both end of the professional wrestling spectrum. I think that's why it works. You had your emotional, kind of traditional pro wrestling match. And then we switched into just the crazy hard car stuff. 
Well, I mean, there was a lot of there was a lot of crazy. I think as we, I mean, basically, just to, we're jumping all over the place here. At the end of the night, it was quite clear that they'd run over a little bit, and the main event, which was the Young Bucks match, just went super, super quick. So I'm, I'm guessing eventually that kind of dripped down throughout the cards. Things were sped up, but I mean, yeah, I mean, in terms of tying everything into being the elite and the story, I mean, if you decided to watch All In and you've never watched an episode of Being the Elite, I feel sorry for you. Because you're going to be like, there's a boot, there's a man with penises, you know, so, for some reason, like, I don't understand any of it. But I think that's why, uh, it, it was a phone being strangled by someone next. I mean, you could, you could probably buy that, you know, into that in professional wrestling as well. I haven't given any ups or downs, have I? Just give it an up. Then we had all the stuff with the penises, a sentence I've never said in my life and hopefully will never say again, or hopefully say every time I do ups and downs. I mean, WWE, there's you've never done that. Sometimes you like to look at other promotions and borrow their gimmicks just give someone a penis gimmick. And then we moved into Jay Lethal versus Flip Gordon, which I actually thought was really clever because obviously they tied in the hole. If you tap Jay Lethal on the shoulder, he'll turn into black machismo. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. I think the real cool thing is this man has just said is that they, I mean, Lanny Poffo came out with uh, Jay Lethal as well, which I think was cool. That was the other thing I really, really liked. They bridged generational gaps. So that can have an up as well. Like I say, Jeff Jarrett was there. DDP was there. Lanny Poffo was there. Uh, I mean, El Hebner was doing the rest, Tully Blanchard was there. I think um, oh, who was, uh, Magnum TA was at the ringside as well. We saw him too. Uh, Animal, Animal, of course, they did. They had a really good bit. I didn't even talk about that. I'm an idiot. They had a really good bit when the Cody Rhodes and the Bucks came out at the start. And they said, you know, they took the mick at the WWE with the pyro. And yeah, they said, you need, a, you, know, you need a cameo from a legend. And Road Warrior Animal came out. And all of that stuff, I thought, um, I thought that was really cool. And obviously, Jay Lethal, as uh, Black Machismo did, decide that Brandy Rhodes was Elizabeth and he picked her up like they did and he kept taking her back to the corner like when the mega powers exploded. All of that was, I think it was great because also, and I get what WWE does, they speak to a general crowd, which they have to do. That's their, that's their main demographic. But the fact that these guys booked this show to talk to people like us that love wrestling and understand all of that and do watch Being the Elite, I thought it made it interesting and I thought it made it different. And I appreciate it as well. I felt like I was part of a special little club that you know, you actually have to have a bit of effort and a bit of foresight away from the show to enjoy. So that can get enough as well. Lethal one, it kicked because Flip Gordon kicked out of the lethal injection, but then what? It, it was it again, right? Okay. So anyway, Jay Lethal is still your Ring of Honor champion. Then we had Billy Ray came out afterwards. He attacked both, uh, to which, uh, and then, this is the interesting thing. Colt Cabana came out to, to do it, and then Colt Cabana, uh, Jay Lethal, and Flip Gordon did the Shield Power Bomb. Yeah. Now. <laughs> It's, I'm going to walk on eggshells here, but you know, that's what I do. I liked it a lot, right? I'm going to give a down to the fans because all the fans went, ooh, ah. And they, and they will be the same people on Squared Circle. I got like Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is crap. But you just did his taunt at the most indie, indie wrestling show ever. Then we move into Pentagon uh, Junior, or whatever his name is, away from his autogram, against Kenny Omega. And you could tell that... The, and you could tell this with the fans have been waiting for this. Obviously, it gets an up, as you can imagine. And they just kicked each other's ass. I mean, it was also a story. He, he really got <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was basically a story of, you know, let's let's take one person's finisher and make it mean absolutely nothing, and let's keep the other person's finisher and you know maintain it as one of the best in the business. I'm being facetious there, obviously. But yeah, we saw Penta's package pile driver on the apron. We saw it about three times in the ring. It's the hardest part of the ring. I heard about this. I've heard about it, and it was just, it was just it was just crazy. I mean, these two, as you can imagine, they kicked the crap out of each other. Uh, some of the seeing the V triggers up close as well. Like, how the hell does he do that without breaking the guy's neck? I mean, they're just two incredible professional wrestlers that I think I can appreciate more seeing them, you know, up close and personal. They know what they're doing. Kenny Omega did wing after the one wing angel. And then I imagine it's probably the biggest up of the night for some people, or at least thing that surprised everybody. And luckily near where I was sitting, you saw a guy get whipped out in a luchador mask. Everyone was saying, maybe it's Neville, maybe they're gonna do something with that. But it wasn't, and as soon as the man got in the ring, you could tell, well, we're gonna talk about Neville, don't worry. We, 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 you could tell from his, Jer uh, his Jerichos, from his tattoos, yeah. <laughs> that it was Chris Jericho. Yeah. And once again, everybody went absolutely crazy. He gave Kenny Omega two code breakers, and then somewhat hilariously said, I'm gonna see you on the Jericho cruise. <laughs> and everyone was like, the Jericho cruise? I don't know about that. I get it down, that's fun. Then we segued into Okada versus Marty Scott, and again, Okada for me, and this is no big surprise, he's one of the best wrestlers in the world because he does the same thing every time. You're kind of sitting there, you're enjoying his match, but like, it's okay, it's different, and you get to the last eight, you know, five to eight minutes, and he just turns it up to, ah, oh, and that's not saying anything of Marty Scurll as well. He was just, he was equally as good. They told a big man, little man story throughout, 
And it was just, the last five minutes were probably my personal highlight of the show because the card is so good. And it, it actually, this was the match I believe as well, it was, um, where they had such a close near fall after Marty Skrull yeah. gave Okada the Rainmaker. Phil thought it, I thought it, everybody in my section thought it. He just beat Okada. And fair play to both of them. They did an incredible, I'm just gonna read it because I've, I've got it written down. It was crazy. It went, attempted Rainmaker, umbrella by Marty Skrull. He went to God to use it as a weapon. He then reversed the Rainmaker, got that, that near fall. The crowd went nuts. And then Marty Skrull spit in his face. He slapped his face to Rainmaker, Okada wins. And before all that, you had the 205 thing by Okada mocking Marty Skrull. He went for a Rainmaker. Skrull reversed that into a finger break spot, then put in the chicken wing. And then you saw the Okada drop kick after it. It was just unbelievable. And it's this kind of thing where maybe if you never watched professional wrestling, you saw that all together instantly, you'd be like, I want to know more about these guys. Uh, I think Mike Skull did great. You know, it tied into all the being the elite stuff. Uh, I mean, it was just awesome. It, it really, really, really was. Uh, we then kind of realized how quickly they got everybody out of the ring. As they, as they admitted afterwards, the show was running long and they basically had 15 minutes to get everything in. So Rey Mysterio's music hit. Uh, Rey Mysterio, Phoenix and Bandino came out really, really quick, as did the Golden Elite. And I mean, it was it was in fast forward, but I think in many ways it proved what good professional wrestlers they were to be able to adapt to that on the fly, get all their stuff in. And I mean, I'm not even going to try and do this justice by going through it move by move. If I did, we'd be here for another hour. They did everything. And that's the first time I've seen Bandino live. My word, that man has money written them all over him. And there was Meltzer Driver for the win. And then literally within seconds, we were off the air yeah. to the point I to the point I thought, yeah, that's like it. So now. that can get down, you rang along. I guess I'm down there. But I, that's what I thought. I thought, oh, someone's coming out. And then Phil went, no, it's, it's the production logo, Simon. I was like, oh, okay. But I mean, really, I don't think, uh, I'm sure there are some criticisms you could have if you want to sit down and, and study it in that sense. But overall, I think it absolutely nailed it. I think the connection between fans and wrestlers isn't like any show I've ever been to before. There was a goodwill constantly. I mean, no one actually did mess up, but I believe even if they did, the crowd would have would have willed them through it. Again, if you, again, you want to be super critical, you could say, well, they've never booked a show before. Maybe their card order could have been better. Maybe they could have you know, been more to time. But these are you know insignificant things compared to 10 or 11 matches, whatever it was in the end. They pretty much lived up to the hype. And again, the, the goodwill in that arena, that venue was wonderful. Everybody out here, you can tell, has had a good time. And that everybody wants all in too. And there was strong suggestions after the cameras went off there. Cody Rhodes ain't going nowhere. Young Bucks ain't going nowhere. Kenny Omega ain't going nowhere. They're probably Probably going to do another one next year. I hope they do. And over, overall, oh, all into or double or nothing, right? That's what they said. So overall, I genuinely thought it was a wonderful show. If you haven't checked it out, I would strongly advise that you uh, that you do. Uh, I have no idea what the up or down count is, but I just say this: it's one big massive up. I had a really really good time. I think something has happened here, and I hope to see uh, I hope to see more of it uh, in the future. But thank you to my little crew of people that have joined me. I appreciate it. And, uh, <laughs> this is nice. This is nice. Work culture! Work culture! Work culture! Look at that. Cheap pops. Cheap pops till the end. That can get an up. But you know what to do. You like the video, you share the video, you subscribe to the channel, you then head to whatculture.com and you read yourself some articles and you follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCulture WWE. My name is Simon from What Culture. You've been watching Ups and Downs and Oh, well, I, 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 um, how do I record my videos when you're not there? I know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I've, you made me lose my flow. I will be back in a couple of days to up those downs for Monday Night Raw. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for my crowd. We'll see you soon.